Yes, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight, before the uh, main debate, there will be no emergency debate. It will be the hustings for the election, which is tomorrow. This is the election for officers in Michaelmas 2013. We're going to, if the rest, we're going to start with the candidates for president, then go through the rest of the officerships, and then end with the supplementary committee. Um, briefly how this will work, presidential candidates will have speeches of five minutes in length, then they will have five questions afterwards from the floor. Other officers will have speeches three minutes in length, and they will have three questions from the floor, and then the supplementary committee will have speeches one minute in length, and they will have one question from the floor. So it gives me great pleasure to call upon Alex Porter, who is running for president for Michaelmas 2013. everybody um, thank you all for coming I'm sorry you have to listen to this beforehand but I'll try and keep it short and I promise there will be a good debate afterwards um, I'd like to just take a couple of minutes of your time to give you my vision for Michaelmas 2013 at the Union um, what I see as the most important job of the Michaelmas president is attracting new members to the Union I want freshers to see the Union as an absolute hub of debate in Cambridge I want them to see it as the center of Cambridge life and this means putting on the issues that you care about Having the debates, if there's a debate going on on campus about Cambridge issues, that should be the emergency debate that week. If there's something in the news that everyone is talking about, that should be the motion. But not only do I want this to be an intellectual hub on campus, I want this to be a social hub. And that's why I'll strongly support the bar staff and the social events officer to make a great range of social events for Freshers Week and beyond, well into Michaelmas. Obviously, a massive part of attracting, of attracting freshers to the union is putting on a great term card. And I feel that as speaker's officer for this term, I'm in a really good position to do this. I've been in touch with loads of agents and lots of really interesting speakers, and I continue that work into Michaelmas. Um, some of the speakers that I've booked this term include Hugh Bonville, Pamela Anderson, Maureen Le Pen, and I continue this well into Michaelmas to create a really great term card. Obviously, the term card isn't just about speakers. It's massively about debates too, but I've helped organise debates this term and last, and I know what goes into organising a really great debate. Not only would I get great speakers for the debate, but I want the issues that you want discussed as the motions. And that's why I'd have a massive push over the holidays and over next term to get in touch with members and see what they want from debates. And this brings me on to my second point of the importance of engaging members properly. Michaelmas is the time not only to attract new members, but to re-engage the ones we already have. A testament to this, it, the fact that not all members are seeing us as relevant anymore, is the lack of candidates here today. It proves that the union is not seen as relevant to everyone anymore. And I want that to change. I want there to be an, uh, the ability to get involved at every level. I want to expand on the committee structure to get anyone involved with any level of time commitment that they want to put their all into the union. But not only for people that want to get involved, they shouldn't be the only ones that have a say. Everyone pays membership fees. Some people just want to show up and have good stuff on. But I think that there should be better feedback me mechanisms for those people. Not just the old tired ones that we've tried, feedback forms and online forms and emails. I want to put a face to the people that you email. I want officers to actively be going into the bar, asking you what you want. And in Freshers' Week, this is so important to make the union a friendly and welcoming place where you know who to ask. If you want better speakers, you go to the speakers elect and you just, you know, you know who they are. And that would be so much nicer for a much more friendly, welcoming union. And as part of this, I'd like to bridge the gap between competitive debating and the other side of the union. And getting freshers involved in all areas and letting them know competitive debating is an option here and they're not mutually exclusive at all. The final thing I'd like to talk to you about is my vision that I'd like to continue past the end of Michaelmas 2013. I want to bring the union into the 21st century, especially our online presence. I don't know how many of you have been on the website, but quite frankly, it's pretty appalling. Um, the website needs to be dragged kicking and screaming into the 21st century. It's difficult to get around and I would want a massive overhaul of it over the summer so that we could have the brand of the Cambridge Union for free speech and the art of debating as a recognisable thing nationally. I think that this would not, and this can be expanded into the YouTube channel as well, which at the moment I don't feel is utilised half as much as it could be and in a good way at all. Um, and this is something that would not only, you know, make it easier for members to engage with the union, but also would make us more recognisable and attract more high profile speakers as this would be a destination for speakers to come to. This would be a place that speakers want to speak in. Um, so that's what I see as my vision for Michaelmas going forward. Um, attracting new members, engaging with those we already have and 
just generally modernizing the place. Um, I hope that you all take the time to vote tomorrow and uh, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you, Alex. Now, if anyone has any questions for Alex, then they please raise their hand and I will pick them and then Alex can respond. Does anyone have any questions for Alex at all? You don't have to wait for a microphone, just ask the question. Yes. You don't have to wait for a microphone. Yeah, I think college reps is a really important mechanism for feedback. I don't think college reps should be a doing committee as much as it should be a committee for feedback. That should be the committee for personal feedback. I see it more as actually an open meeting. That's, that's the kind of vision I'd have for college reps. So for people that just want to get involved in a smaller time commitment, there would be more options to get involved through committees that would be low time commitment. And then have college reps as not just a meeting for individual reps from every college, but more just an open meeting. If you've got any questions with what went on this week, if you've got any, any feedback to give whatsoever, come along to college reps, there'll be some pizza and let's have a chat with a couple of the officers. That's what I see college reps as going forward. Um, yeah, I completely defend the decision to invite her. Um, I, as I said in my speech, I want this to be a, a hub for debate in Cambridge, and I think it's really important that that includes inviting people who may, we may not want to hear, but who definitely need to be challenged. And quite frankly, considering how prolific right-wing politics is in France and the rest of Europe, um, and that she, you know, she did get 20, almost 20% of the votes in France, it's incredibly important that we invite such prominent people here to challenge their views, and I completely defend the decision. Any other questions? If not, I'll say thank you very much to Alex. <laughs> and the other candidate for president for Mikomas 2013 is Joanna Moved. Hello, I'm Joanna and I'm running for president for Michaelmas 2013. I see the role of the president as preserving and enhancing the strengths that the union has built up over its 200 year history. I've been on the team at the union since the second term of my first year and I see the union as something really powerful for presenting high profile speakers and the liveliest debates. I also recognise its significance as part of university life in Cambridge. And as executive officer this term, my role has involved a combination of internal and external liaison. Internal liaison within the committee to ensure that the day-to-day -day running of the union is as, as, as effective as possible. And external liaison, talking to members, gathering their feedback and finding out what the highlights of union membership are for them. So here's what I've learned from, le from listening to members. The calibre of debates is a major highlight. Debates like the religion debate and the clash between Rome Williams and Richard Dawkins are something that I would put on the programme for Michaelmas term. I have practical experience doing so. I orchestrated the first two debates of terms, bringing them from a concept on a piece of paper to a list of speakers to invite, to having them materialise with a chamber full of members ready to engage and get right to the heart of the issues that matter to them. I recognise the importance of the big set pieces, the high profile speakers and having the themes and topics that are most pertinent to Cambridge students and to the audience as a whole. And with the experience I've had this term, I feel that I have the capacity to put on a really exciting term of debates. Secondly, I'd like to talk about membership. Broadening and increasing membership is a major part of the Michaelmas presidency. The Membership numbers for the past two years have been extremely strong, and that's a testament to the recruitment drives over the past two years, but we can do more. 
I see this role as a combination of diversifying membership and increasing it. I've got practical experience getting brand new initiatives off the ground. When I was diversity officer, I orchestrated and established the first ever set of termly equality forums. These involved having members and non-members come to the union and bring their feedback, aims and goals um, with respect to any different aspect of diversity. The members and non-members that have come to these diversity forums are now in the audience today. They're in appointed positions running the union on a day-to-day -day basis and they continue to come to the termly equality forums and continue to give their feedback as an effective and long-term mechanism. With this practical and pragmatic experience, I feel that I could offer to the recruitment drive a very hands-on approach and ensure that we have more and more representative members. Um, and this is what characterizes the union, the membership. Finally, I see the union as having a leading position, not just in Cambridge, but beyond. And I think it's our responsibility to use it. The debates we hold, our membership, and the partnerships that we forge are the three important tenets of that. And here's how I think we can use them. Two weeks ago, the union, through its access officers, held its inaugural partnership with the Young Mayors Initiative, which is um, an initiative for school children in Newham. They came to the union, they sat upstairs before the debate, they had a very vibrant Q&A with some of the officers and um, learnt what Cambridge or university life in general is about. They had a tour of the town, they had a debating workshop and a Q&A and then they came to a union debate. The experience of putting this together alongside some of the other officers um, highlighted to me what's important about the union. The breadth of what it does, the way that it allows people to congregate, to learn from each other, um, and you get to see such a spectrum of university life within these walls. My feeling is that we need to bring this presence outside of the walls of the union, and that's our responsibility to share it with um, the rest of society. So what have I talked to you about today? <laughs> What's important about the union? The big names, the high profile speakers, congregating at the union bar and having fun social events, and becoming a central forum for debate, discourse and discussion. As Michaelmas president, I would work for you to maintain and uphold the profile of the union, its reputation, and most of all, its integrity. And so I hope you'll vote for me tomorrow. Thank you. And does anyone have any questions for Joanna? Tim. Um, so in the past couple of years, we've had three presidents run on the ticket of getting a disabled bathroom for the union, uh, which we don't have at the moment, which is a bit embarrassing, because when we have a disabled person here, we have to tell them, oh, if you need the loo, you can go down the road. Um, what will you do differently in order to actually make this happen? Uh, or, or has anything happened so far that you, you have contributed to? That's a very good question. Has anything happened so far? Yes. Multiple uh, presidents, candidates in various different positions have um, run on a platform for promoting disabled access. And naturally, I think everyone here recognizes the importance of that. Um, what's happened? Well, since we initiated the role of diversity officer, um, it's become a, an important, a more important initiative, one that people recognise as something that's actually practically going to happen rather than one that's going to sit in a line on a manifesto. So, so far I have put together a spreadsheet of all the different grants and funds we can apply for to fund this disabled bathroom because um, as we understand it now there is no particular budget within the union's finances for it. Um, we have a team of people applying for those grants and funds. We have contractors coming in and looking at how we can um, engage in getting planning permission for it and hopefully we will never have to tell a speaker ever again that they have to go to Cafe Rouge to go to the bathroom. Uh, I apologize, I'm a bit ill. Um, <laughs> I think at this stage, when you've got two, it seems to be exceptionally qualified candidates, something else becomes more important. I think that's passion. And you really, really didn't articulate this much in your speech. So, Joanna, why, what, what makes you passionate about the union? Well, I'm sorry you don't feel that I've articulated my passion enough, um, and I hope I'm about to do it now. The thing that makes me passionate about the union is on the first debate of term, um, having run around frantically in a very tall set of shoes to try and orchestrate very last minute speakers when a speaker dropped out with a migraine, 
having spent the vacation prior to that debate coming up with a list of speakers that will be representative across the board, so politicians, leaders from think tanks, MPs, um, grassroots leaders, activists, student speakers to get a student representative and a student perspective on the, on the motion. And then finally, coming to the debate itself, sitting and seeing the audience engage with the topic, that's my passion. Watching something go from an idea in an office, a group of officers discussing something, a group of people saying, oh, actually, that member at College Rep suggested that we do this motion, or this is, an, off this is a, 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 an issue that people feel is important to them, so the issue we chose is Oxbridge and its role, its role in society and social mobility. Um, and then seeing that happen, seeing it on the day, and seeing people's faces light up when they stand up and try and pick the speakers out on the points they're making and um, the arguments they're raising. That's my passion, Ravi. Um, many of the positions tonight are running unopposed. Do you have anything to say about the involvement in the union and having regular members join in in the running of it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as diversity officer, one of the major parts of my role was trying to broaden the um, insights and inputs that people have into the union. Um, and I think that the getting involved drive that has been a very collaborative one across you know, all the different officers elected and appointed has been successful in many ways. For instance, we had a treasurer's by-election very recently that was one of the most hotly contested by-elections that I've ever seen. We had a supplementary committee by-election that was also very tightly contested. And I think that there is actually um, an eagerness and a hunger to get involved with the union. Um, and the last two elections that we've had are very representative of that. Hi, sorry. I don't know if you've noticed the chamber is not actually full. And my question is, what are you going to do about diversifying the access to the actual union, to the general public, and especially to Angela, Angela Ruskin? Because I don't think that we're going to have wonderful people speaking in wonderful debate and be this empty. So what are you doing about it individually? That's another really good question. Um, one of the most important factors about the diversity meetings I've been holding is they're open to members and non-members, because without listening to non-members, we don't know why they're not members. Um, the Anglia Ruskin point you brought up is also a very important one, and I'm sure that Krista will touch upon that. She's been our Anglia Ruskin union rep for the past two terms and is now running for supplementary committee. Um, Tim and I are going to orchestrate a recruitment drive at Anglia Ruskin later this term, and um, I can see a broad range of possibilities for engaging members and non-members. Um, you keep on, my question is quite simple. You keep on saying that the diversity forum is open to both members and non-members. How many non-members have actually shown up? Well, we don't ask them whether they're members before they come in because I think that would be singling people out and um, typifying them into a box, which is obviously not the objective. Um, but I think by opening up a forum to non-members, we get a perspective that's very different from um, ones we might get from people who get to come to the debates every single week. And I'm sure that if you look at the ideas that were raised in the diversity meetings, for instance, different ways that you could make fees more accessible, um, different partnership events you could have with external societies, um, sort of different university societies, societies coming into the union co-hosting events, um, and social events that are co-hosted as well. There's a range of different ideas that have been put together which involve a partnership between the membership and the rest of um, the university in the town. And so I think that's a testament to the involvement and interest that non-members have in the union. Uh, that's the last question, so thank you very much, Joanna. Uh, unfortunately, our candidate for executive officer, our only candidate for executive officer, Harry Pito, cannot be with us tonight. Um, so uh, we are moving on past the executive officer to the speaker's officer, where our candidate is Oliver Jackson. Hi, everybody. Um, I'd just like to quickly explain to you sort of what the speaker's officer does, because I'm aware that before I ran for this position, I didn't know either, so I'm assuming a lot of you aren't aware of this at all. Uh, and then I'm going to explain why I think I should 
be what I would do in this role and why I'd be good. Firstly, the speakers officer, fairly obviously, is important for inviting the big name speakers, the big people, the people that come here and that everybody wants to come and see, the guys that we uh, have to ticket events for because the appeal is so broad. Um, and the way we do this is that we send out hundreds, hundreds, pushing a thousand letters for every term in the vague hope, in the vain hope that some people will say yes. And they do, but it's a very, very small percentage. Um, and so one of the things that we have to do is, aside from just mass mailing everybody important in the world, um, is to make sure that these people actually have an incentive to say yes. Uh, and one of the ideas that I've had for this, um, which I put on my manifesto, but I doubt many of you read that, so I thought I might as well enunciate it here, uh, is to keep in touch with the successful speakers here, with the people that have turned up and have had dinner and have come, have spoken, have been challenged and have had a great evening, so that when they go away, uh, we just sort of send them a thank you letter and go, thanks so much for coming, for taking an evening out of your busy life, your important life, so that you can come and tell us what you've done and how uh, sort of we can hope to emulate it or so on. Um, and that way, if they feel that they've given something to us and we've given something back, uh, then they can go away and talk to their various with any luck, famous friends, um, and sort of recommend that these guys, yeah, you know what, I had a great evening at the Union. Uh, have they invited you? Have they invited you? Oh, wait, they have. Why don't you go? Um, it's all about, it's the word of mouth. It's the positive feedback, which is what we're after here. Um, and so that's one of the main ideas which I have, which isn't currently being done. I think it's something that we can definitely improve on. Um, the second idea I've had, and this has been especially apparent this term, what with the infamous Marine Le Pen uh, and various other people, is that we need to make sure that the speakers we invite uh, are people that you want to hear. And that sounds all very well, and it's a wonderful platitude. It doesn't actually mean much. Um, the only way we can find out which speakers you want to hear is if you tell us. Um, and we've already had Alex sort of consigning sort of feedback forms and online forms to the past, but I would challenge her on that uh, and say that actually if there is somewhere quite clearly labelled on the union website, I don't know, a box in the bar as well, say, uh, where you can put in a piece of paper and say, hi there, please could you invite Tracy Emin or something, because we don't get many sort of artists and so on people here. Um, so I think there's something as simple as that, uh, just where maybe you pick out a name where we go, oh actually we, we didn't think of that guy, yeah that's a great idea, let's, do, let, let's have them. Um, and that would be brilliant, and an online form where it's literally just a box where you fill in, uh, I don't know, let's go for David Beckham. Uh, you're saying, like, yeah, I'd like David Beckham to speak. And obviously, I think we've tried that one and it didn't work, so not a brilliant example. Um, but it's that sort of thing. It's just a little thing. It's a simple thing, because that's what the role of the speaker's office is for. I am here, fingers crossed, um, to make sure that the speakers that we get are as many, as varied, and as fantastic as possible. So, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ollie. Um, are there any questions? Yes. Hi. So you, you said you didn't know what the speaker's role was. and So, so far, what have you done to try and get involved in the union so that you can fulfill this role that you're taking on? Thank you very much for asking that question. Um, well, this term I've been working on the press front with the press team. Uh, I don't know if any of you came to that fantastic debate between Rowan Williams and Richard Dawkins and so on. Like the press work that went on behind that uh, with myself, Joanne Stewart and Ollie Deed, who I'm sure you've seen around if you, even if you don't know their names. Um, the press work that went on for that was brilliant. I, we were contacting journalists, writing out press releases, uh, getting in touch with newspapers, trying to sort of maximise the union sort of influence and image uh, to a more national scale. Uh, I've also, with relevance to the speaker's officer, um, sent out countless invitations uh, to various to various speakers because that's the way this role works like the speakers the speakers officer personally can't write these hundreds and hundreds of invitations um, it depends on you guys uh, we'll get in touch with you and say hey would you mind writing five invitations to so and so and so over the course of the next week and with any luck you'll say yes um, and then we send them out and hope that works and that's what I've been doing for the last two terms uh, and it's prepped me wonderfully for this role and so that's two reasons why I think I'd be extremely suitable Hi. Um, so again, with talking about Marie Le Pen and all these contentious speakers, that people there are people outside, um, sort of saying, "Don't let them speak." Um, what's your position on that? Do you think that it's? Um, do you support inviting these speakers who people might think don't deserve to have a voice? And if 
would you sort of think about not inviting someone because there was a lot of um, anger about it in the Cambridge community? I think especially here in a centre of debate more than freedom of speech in my opinion, um, it's important that we hear the views of people that we don't like, the views that we don't necessarily support, so that we can challenge them. That's the important thing. And this was one thing that wasn't picked up on, unfortunately, by the 50 people or so that decided to protest about Marina Pan, is that we're not here to sort of give them a voice and say, congratulations, well done. We're here to listen to what these people say and then go, actually, you're wrong, and tell them why they're wrong, and then have, have the argument, sort of get, get to the very bottom of the debate here. And so that is something that I would support within its limits, obviously. Um, a decent example, I believe, is Julian Assange. Um, I would not invite him because he is hiding from justice. And I think that's a legitimate excuse. Marine Le Pen is not, um, just I know, as an example there. So I think the, the debate and the argument is as important as sort of the freedom of speech platform in this context. And one final question, does anyone have? Yeah, at the back. As a sort of final tangent on the whole um, Marine Le Pen, other speakers' issues, um, do you think that the union could do more to get some speakers who are speaking by virtue of life experience instead of fame? So, for example, the people we have tend to be people with very, very high-profile positions in society. For example, you know, Julian Assange, Marine Le Pen, politicians, people who are making the decisions. Do you think that as do you think that we could potentially do more to get speakers, for example, who are um, ex-standard military personnel or victims of crimes such as rape, which has you know, clearly been a serious issue here? Do you think we could get more people in who are here because of what they've experienced and um, not just you know, as a simple result of their being high-profile characters? I think that's a very good point, and it's quite well illustrated by the fact that some of the invitations that I was uh, writing a few weeks ago uh, were to ex-inmates of Guantanamo Bay, for example. Uh, these aren't famous people. These are people who have suffered, um, have experienced uh, something that hopefully we never will, and yet through a, through a result of that experience have sort of a tale to tell that is worth is worth us hearing. Um, that's just one example. But yes, I completely agree that it is necessary for us not to focus purely on the fame, on sort of the superficial aspects of, I don't know, our potential invitee, uh, but also on sort of the actual experience and what they've done uh, to get into that position. Yes, I agree. Uh, thank you, Oni. <laughs> and running for the position of treasurer is Michael Dungogen. Thank you very much. So there are two things I'm going to try and tell you today. First, I'm going to tell you what I think the role of Treasurer for Michaelmas 2013 is and what I want to do with it. And second, I'm going to tell you why you should trust me to do that. Um, so first, what is the role of Treasurer? Well, there are really three components to this role. So the first and the most important is securing termly sponsorship. The second is overseeing Treasurer's treats. And the third is looking over the President's budget for the term. Now, of these three roles, by far the most important is securing sponsorship. So I'm going to talk about that now. If you have questions about either of the other two, I'll be happy to take those later. Um, so corporate sponsorship. Now, Obviously, the aim here is to raise as much money as possible. In the past, Michaelmas treasurers have raised about £30,000. We've broken the record for the last two years. I'd hope to continue that very good trend. Um, so what is sponsorship? Basically, firms pay us in exchange for advertising, for example, in the term card, right the way up to things like sponsored debates. Um, so there are two key areas I want to talk about here. First is sponsorship from, from corporations potentially looking um, at graduate recruitment. And the second um, is local firms. The first is by far the most important. Um, so graduate recruitment makes up the vast majority of our sponsorship, um, and I really want to target firms that would like to recruit from among our membership over the course of my tenure if I am elected. So firms like Goldman Sachs, like Deutsche Bank, like Linklaters, like McFarlane's, like Clifford Chance, for instance, many of which have sponsored us in the past. I want to look through our database of previous contacts and just use all the skills at my disposal to try and sell them the biggest sponsorship package possible, in addition to considering other firms that might also be interested in sponsoring us for HR purposes. 
But I'd also like to take a look at broadening our sponsorship a little bit and taking a look at local businesses as well. This, won't, this is no, not going to be as big a source of revenue as graduate recruitment, but I think it is a market that is fundamentally well suited to our product in that it, the sort of casual purchases that local businesses ask you to make suits very well the sort of casual advertising that we offer, like banner stands in the bar, for instance. So I'd look at schemes like Dan Hyman's um, local business map that he's currently working on that could raise potentially five to ten thousand pounds. These are also good ways to supplement our sponsorship income. So why should you trust me to do this? Well, there are really three key skills needed for this role. Organizational skills, understanding of how the union works, and communication. And I'd like to convince you that I have all three. So organizational skills. At school, I ran a variety of large societies with over 100 members each and substantial budgets. So all of the organizational burden that comes with a job like this, I hope will be well within my capacity. In terms of understanding the union, I've been involved with the union from day one with my somewhat um, exuberant contributions to the, to the debates. Um, but I've also been involved in supplementary this committee this term and I'm getting more and more involved in the administration of the union. I'm also passionate about competitive debating here. So have a good understanding of all different aspects of the union. And finally, communication skills. This segues from the last point. I'm really involved in competitive debating, really involved in public speaking, will hopefully put some of the, that experience of the art of persuasion to good use in persuading firms to give us lots of money in sponsorship. Thank you very much and good evening. Uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Michael? Uh, Casey. Don't wait for a microphone, just shout. Oh, hello. Uh, Michael, uh, say I, I am a big business. Say I'm Goldman Sachs. Uh, could you sell me the union, please? Good evening, Mr. Blankfine. Um, we are the Cambridge Union Society, the oldest debating society in the world, and the principal student society here at the University of Cambridge. We have a membership of over 7,500 students engaged in current affairs and debate. Um, we offer a variety of sponsorship packages varying from advertisements in, in, our, in our term card, which is distributed to over 7,500 students here at the University of Cambridge, right the way up to sponsored debates, where, um, where students could be engaging with material and potentially with speakers um, offered and helped to be and shaped by you. So we offer you a variety of helpful opportunities, to, uh, of, of powerful opportunities to engage with what is an, incredi an incredibly diverse and dedicated collection of students who could potentially, could potentially perform very, very well um, in your employ in the near future. That's <laughs> Just a sample pitch. Uh, the chap in the um, orange jacket. Yeah. I would consider any corporation for partnership. Um, obviously, if a Mexican drug lord came and offered me sponsorship, I would think twice. Obviously, <laughs> obviously if a firm wanted to restrict um, the debate that we offer here, wanted to prevent us from hosting certain speakers, we would definitely have to consider very carefully whether we were willing to take their money. But in principle, I am not willing to sort of, you know, say absolutely no to these firms. I think we'll consider it on a case-by-case -case basis, but certainly there are obviously limits to the ways in which we will prostitute our society for money. <laughs> and one final question. Uh, yes, the chap at the top. This is something I've spoken about before. Um, I think there are definitely, we can definitely look at, at new ways of, of pricing membership. I think our current backloaded pricing scheme is interesting. I think there, there is also, you know, a good, you know, there's a good argument to be made for a front-loaded one, whereby we charge more to people who, who, buy, who, who buy early, because of course they're the people who are keenest to pay. At the moment, the prices rise if you don't buy initially, and hence people who were at first less incentivized to buy are hit by the further disincentive of a fee rise. I think we could potentially expand membership more by backloading the backloading the fees we could also get more revenue because of course more members means more revenue this is something to look at ultimately you know there are also strong arguments for a front loaded pricing scheme in terms of um, a back loaded pricing scheme in terms of getting early increases in membership um, I need to read more of the academic material on this. Um, there is certainly a, a great theory behind behind these sorts of pricing pr pricing ideas and I'd like to look at that. Ultimately the price of membership is something at the discretion of the president I'd obviously talk about this with her whoever she may be. Thank you very much Michael.
Uh, and now the candidates for the supplementary committee, and in no particular order, uh, just people who are sitting there, um, Rupert Campbell. Uh, I'm Rupert Campbell Manners. I'll be down on your ballot tomorrow as Rupert Campbell Manners. Um, the supplementary committee is supposed to be helpful for other parts of the committee that have a more obvious role. So it would be slightly ridiculous if I told you what I was going to do um, other than be helpful. Um, <laughs> I think I'm in a good position to do that because I'm pliable without being completely inert. Um, I don't think there's going to be any circumstances in the way to stop me being helpful because I haven't got any exams next term. So uh, all in all, yeah, that's 60 seconds. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Nick Wright and I'm running for um, SUPCOM because as a first year historian fresher at Trinity, uh, I have very little to do next year, sorry, first year and fresher obviously you know, sort of implied. Um, I have a lot of free time and I really want to spend that making a difference to the union, making the union better, a better place, both for the membership and furthering uh, the principle of free speech. If elected, I would work alongside the committee, whom as a member of speakers committee this term, I've already been working clo uh, alongside closely to achieve this as well as working on what I promise, uh, promise in my manifesto, which can be found outside there or on um, the Facebook page um, for my candidacy. Um, I believe that as someone who is always uh, already involved in organizing next term at the union, including inviting all the speakers for a major forum event next term, as well as being a regular attendee at debates, speaker events, and debating workshops, I would have the experience, ideas, and dedication to be an excellent member of SUPCOM. I hope that um, you'll all go out and vote uh, tomorrow. It's really important for the union and, um, that you do. Um, and I hope that if you do, you'll consider voting uh, me, Nick Wright, for Subcom. Thanks. Uh, does anyone have a question? Tim. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, how pliable would you say you are? <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> has anyone got a serious question? For Unless that was serious, Tim. No? At the back? Uh, good. Um, <laughs> nice. Yes. Um, now, Rachel Tookie. Hiya, I'm Rachel. Um, like with um, Nick and Rupert, I'm a first year English student, so I also have a ridiculous amount of free time. But unlike them, I have a very limited social life. So I would argue <laughs> I have even more time than either of them. <laughs> Um, I've previously been involved in the competitive debating side of the union, um, so I competed at inter-university competitions and was really quite atrocious. So in a dramatic U-turn, I've decided to get involved in the mechanisms of the union. Um, I'm really passionate about the promotion of free speech. Um, there's two things I would like to get involved in specifically if I was to be elected. Um, the first one is access for women and helping to promote them within the union and stop the sort of imbalance that you get later on in society between genders in politics. Um, so I try and um, have a greater presence of the union in Freshers' Week. And the second point is to get a union cat, because I just think a union pet would be lovely. Um, so vote for me, the crazy cat lady. <laughs> Does anyone have a question? Please make sure it's not what type of cat will she get. 
If you are considering asking that question, please put your hand down <laughs> at the back. Hi, um, I really hate cats. Uh, would you consider any other kind of pet? <laughs> And clearly that was a serious question. Um, next is Ted Loveday. Um, yeah, we, I, I think it's a great idea having a pet. We've, obviously, we've got to be careful about sensitivity. You know, what if, like, a goldfish gets invited to speak at the union and people might get really offended about that. Um, no, I, I'm not running because I'm pliable. I, I'm not running because I'm bored and have nothing to do. And... I'm not running because I don't have any friends. Um, I'm, I'm actually running because I really care about you guys. I really enjoy the union. I've had a great couple of terms. And I want to make it the brilliant thing that it's been so far and make sure that it works really efficiently. So supplementary comp committee, there are two things you can basically do. You can make sure it's responsive to the bulk of members. You can make sure that you can speak to people in the bar. You can speak to people in lecture theatres. You can speak to people in your JIP room. And just make sure that, you know, the, the, the front bench standing committee are actually, you know, bang it into their heads what people actually care about. So I've suggested, for example, opinion polls on Facebook. That might be a quick and easy way of doing this. Um, and just speaking to people more. And the other thing is, of course, getting stuff done. I can get stuff done. I'm efficient. I'm hardworking. Um, and I actually care about getting the union responsive to you. So for these reasons, I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> Uh, does anyone have a question? Imogen. I'm sure there are many ways, but which is the primary way? Well, I'm sure there are many ways. Which is the primary way that you think the union is unresponsive? Because that's what you think. No, I think the union is actually doing a very good job, and it's been doing a very good job in terms of feedback forms, in terms of asking questions, in terms of college reps. For example, college reps, I think there is always work to be done on making sure everyone knows who their college rep is um, and how they can speak to them. So, it's great to get as many people as possible coming to the college rep meetings. I think we've got to be careful of having it just, oh, anyone come along, because the idea of a rep is they represent, right? So you know who to speak to, you know who your first port of call is. Um, so things like that, um, making sure the website is decent, and obviously that's a tough job, um, but it does need to look like it's constantly updated. Our latest debate at the moment is from 2011, um, which, yeah, we can, we can always constantly work on this. Thank you, Ted. Uh, next is Krista Lankila. Hello, um, my name is Krista. I'm from Finland and I'm a first year undergrad at Anglia Ruskin. Yay. Um, I like the union so much because obviously it provides a platform for free speech and debate. And there's also a wide variety of other great events. And I've met so many amazing people here that I want to make it open for everyone. And that's obviously my key goal if I get elected. So I would want to continue work with Joanna and Tim and all the other officers to uh, arrange a recruitment event and talk and everything at ARU. And then obviously continue my work in writing speaker invitations and such. And just kind of, you know, do anything I basically can. I have a lot of free time and I'm enthusiastic. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Does, does anyone have a question? Tom. Uh, recruiting events have been run at ARU in the past. Firstly, I'd like to clarify, by making it open, do you mean to everyone or do you mean including ARU as they, they can right now be included and including everyone would make paying for the union very difficult? And secondly, um, ARU uh, things, events, recruitment events have been run there before and they've mostly been unprofitable and not very many people from ARU have joined. What would you do to make sure that doesn't happen again? Well, when I said open to everyone, I meant like more accessible to everyone that can currently join, so ARU and Cambridge students. And I think, I'm, I don't know how they have been run in the past, but I would just m want to put all my effort and passion into it to make it successful and to just publicize it as much as we can and to get people that are just so dedicated to the union that they can convey it to people to make sure that they actually do join and come along. Thanks. 
And finally, Daniel Zimmerev. Hello, my name is Daniel Zimmerev and I'm running for Subcom. I'll present four selling points why I should be elected. Number one, I'm an engineering student and I'm very busy, which has taught me to work efficiently and fast, and I will implement that if elected. Number two, I have been a college rep, which allowed me to better understand the union and how it works. Number three, I've been involved with competitive debating since the start of the year, which helped to improve my communication skills, and that will be very helpful. And number four, during my studies, I had internships in companies and worked on complex projects, which required a lot of planning and organizational experience. I hope I will be able to put that to use in the union. Thank you. And one final, does anyone have a question? Marvelous. Um, well, thank you very much for listening, everyone. And just a couple of other quick things before we start the main debate. Elections, obviously, are tomorrow, and voting is open between 9 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock in the evening in the President's office. There is also online voting. If you do wish to vote online, please make sure you are on the electoral roll. If you voted before in elections online, then you will be on the electoral roll. If you haven't, and you are desperate to vote tomorrow, as clearly most of you are because you're sitting here and you've listened to that, could you please, could you please email development at cus.org and that, then you'll be put on the electoral roll. A couple of other quick announcements, if you do want to get involved in the union. Um, the position which I hold at the moment, Vice President, is up for grabs, which is um, a fantastic position. Um, I can't sell it enough. It's a year-long position. If you want to find any more information about it, please ask me, email Vice President at cus.org. And then finally, the positions for appointments for Easter 2013 are open as well. And if you wish to apply for any one of the appointed positions, please also email me, Vice President at cus.org. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask me or any other officers in the bar after the debate. But thank you very much for listening.